and then hit the right button. Okay, we're recording. Welcome. This is Melinda Barlow, CZT, Certified Centangle Teacher, and welcome to the live Zoom class. We have 61 people so far, which is fabulous. And just remember, if you want it to be pinned so you see me talk, you just go to your picture and pin my video. And if you um, want to talk, you have to unmute yourself because I am um, I am muting everybody and then it'll just make it less noise. You guys are a quiet bunch anyway, I'm pretty sure. So I don't think we have to worry. So I'm going to start out and I had my little, I wrote myself a little cheat sheet, what I was going to teach today. So I didn't forget what we were going to do. So first of all, we're going to start out with, um, a, I'm just going to use a square tile, just a plain square Zentangle tile. And we're going to do, um, I call it squirrel, squill, S Q U I L L. And I, I have loved this one. This is it on a gray tile, and I've kind of enhanced that this is not it completely. I mean, you know me, I never, and I, and I know Maria and, uh, she says there are only suggestions. What, what we see is only a suggestion and you need to just kind of go with it. So I did this without any, any string or border. So we're just going to start with that. And I'm going to use my, um, black O1 pen and we're just going to start by drawing a, and I, I usually start on the diagonal. So I'm just going to start with one diagonal line. And then I'm going to aura that. As close as possible. Let me come in a little closer on this. So you can see. There we go. That's a little closer. Now I rotate. And we're going to do another one. Stop, do the holly bar effect, meaning we go draw under and aura this. And then we rotate again. I always rotate because I find it better if I pull my pen towards me. And I say that all the time that I just get a better line and we're Pulling our pen and making and you want them to try to be pretty equal. Okay, does it look like I'm using a blue pen? Somebody chime in. Does it look blue? Because it looks blue to me. But I know it's black. It looks black to me. Okay, if it looks black, I and then I'm gonna rotate one more time so I end up with thank you. I'm gonna end up with six. Well, last week I used a pen and it looked red and it was, it was really black. So there we have, I call the, this is what I call the asterisk. And a lot of tangles will start with this little kind of asterisk type where you have um, going all, all six directions. So you end up with, um, well, you, you have eight eight sections when you're finished. And so now I'm gonna come back to that first one and I know which one is the first one because it is the one that's over the top. And then I'm gonna come up here to the very top here and I'm going to or I mean, draw out and let it attach about midway to that line. And then I'm gonna rotate and I'm gonna only rotate a quarter because I'm going to do this on all four of these spaces. Rotate a quarter. So they're actually doing the ones that are going to the, the outside points. Rotate a quarter. And you see, I'm really not concerned whether these meet, these meet here, that isn't a concern for me because 
I like this one. It kind of has an organic look to it. So I kind of like the um, them not to meet exactly because I'm going to come back in and do something a little different. Now we're going to aura this, but I'm going to start up here and I'm going to aura it all the way down and then I'm going to connect and aura all the way down. So it has a little, and sometimes I will give it a little, like a little tentacle. And I very seldom go up like this. I usually always come down. I have been known, known to go this direction. Also, but very seldom do I do that. We're going to do that on all of these. And watch, I'm going to tell you, I very seldom do it. And I'm going to do it on all of them from now on. That felt really good. Felt like it worked for me. So I am just going to. And that's kind of how I am. However, it feels that day. If I feel like it's steady and I can get it to draw, um, I feel okay with it. So now we have this area right here. I'm going to add another petal here. So I'm going to add. And you could extend those lines out a little bit. If you thought they were too close, you could extend it out a little bit and give it a little bit more room if you wanted. I usually worry when I do that because I sometimes don't have a good line connection where it connects. And then I'm going to aura this. And this is a step that's not, not in the original um, tangle, this, this other set of leaves. And I, I know for sure that I did not do that. I think I saw it done by somebody um, in a, um, in one of my classes, somebody else did it or online. Somebody had done it. Um, I think it was in one of Rick and Maria's classes that they did. Um, they offered uh, where they were doing illuminated letters. And I believe somebody did this in one of the illuminated letters class. And they had done that. And, that's, and that was way back in the beginning when I was just beginning tangling. And I... It made me realize you don't have to follow any rules. You can just keep going. Matter of fact, I decided that there are so many not rules here that I decided I would put one more set of lines here and draw another, another petal coming out from underneath. I think it, I don't know, it has, it, it's just kind of grows. And I can't believe that I'm ordering going backwards every time now, but two little lines coming out. And then coming back. And then aura in around. And since I really like organic looking tangles, um, this just, you know, really called to me when I, when I saw it. And you can see that I'm orient as I go because I, I like to do that. Sometimes I don't wanna do um, everything and then the last step. And then none of these are, you know, there's no, 
real precision. So there we have it all the way around. Now, when I, I did it on a black, I mean on a gray, and I colored this in black, I did this same tangle, and then I decided I would use a white chalk. I, I, I should say, I thought I would use a um, white jelly roll, and I started, and I know which ones I did the jelly roll on. But I don't know if you can tell which ones. There's a couple of leaves that I did jelly roll on, and I'm going to point them out instead of the white uh, Prisma pencil. This one right here and here, I used a jelly roll. And you know how jelly rolls, they kind of get, they don't fill in real well. They have, you see lines, and in it, I can still see that. They, they just don't fill in well. When, when you can take your um, Prisma, pencil and fill it in and then if you want to blend it you can use your sh your odorless paint thinner and or a little hairspray on a um, shading stump and blend it in and I think you get the same look and I love jelly rolls because I went back in and added the jelly roll on top of here I just let's see if this jelly roll is warm enough I keep thinking we're going to get warm weather here and it was 32 degrees this morning. I did have my windows open, but it was, so you can come and you can come just back and right over the top and add accents with your jelly roll that you can't do with um, chalk. And I don't know if you, from jelly rolls, that ink in there for me, I found if I warm it up, if I just hold it in my hand and warm it up, and if it's very cold, sometimes I will, I will get a little um, bag of rice, put it in my microwave for a minute, and then roll my pen inside of that rice bag and warm it up, and then the ink flows much, much better. It, it doesn't, I just live in a cold climate, and it's just very hard for that ink to go. So that is um, squill, and I think, Oh, I'm looking for my, there's, I, I have the hu a huge pencil here. You could either color these in or with, you know, to shade them. You know, just give yourself a little graphite down here in the, in the center here. This one screams to be colored with colored pencils. Uh, and I just started adding more color. But you can see how you can just really shade this one. This is a fun, fun tangle to do. And I'm going to show you one more little way I did it. I also did it on this tile that I used the Marcus Apparendus to do. You can see I haven't finished coloring it in. And, um, but I, this one, I only did the four leaves. So we're going to take, if you got a Marcus, if you have a Marcus, um, um, operandas. We're going to get those out. And I'm going to take a, because I did this with a, a square, a square tile and I laid it on. I'm going to take just a square, blank square tile and you can lay it on your Marcus operandas and it will fit just barely if you look at the one and it just barely goes over the line in all of your spaces. But I have to, I'm going to digress a little bit because I took the Marcus Apparendus and I decided I wanted to use it on the round tile, but it covered up these lines on the inside here. It says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I took my pen. And I drew, I just took the line and extended it out so that it would extend out past the, this line here. And I also extended where it's one that is the open round one. I'm going to come in a little closer so you can see like right here on the F, I also extended this one down. 
so that when I laid this on, I could see. Here, you can't see the line. You're not sure exactly where to mark. But when you extend that line out, you can use smaller tiles. And I think you could probably use um, I think that I think that got them all. I think I now have them all marked. I had them marked, and I uh, purposely got another one out, so I printed another one so I could show you how I marked them. And then I took my um, my tile and laid it on here, so it was on the square. It can go either direction. It can either go this direction, or Maria's got given us some. Um, guidelines going this direction. So I put it on going this direction and then I took my pencil and on the B line, no, yeah, was on the B line. I'm gonna have to look to see which one I did it on. That's terrible that, oh no, yeah, it was. It was on the one that, that had a little triangle. It doesn't have a, a number. If we look inside, it's number one here. So I'm laying this on here and, but with it on, I didn't really need it. So I'm just gonna do it on a little triangle. I'm gonna mark there and then I'm gonna come down here to this triangle that doesn't have a, a number and then over to this side and then to this one. So that, I just did four little marks. And then you take, I took a round, one of my round three and a half inch tiles to use as a marking device. And I lined it up with those little dots, little marks, and drew a half circle that, well, just traced it. And then on the other side, I traced it. So it gave me I, a string, and I'm gonna move that so you can see the string. So now I've got a string that I can repeat. And so if I wanted to do a tile that the string repeated, I could lay these together and I could have one, well, to be on my don't quite measure up. I must not have done it exactly, but I could put, um, some together. The first one I did really did turn out. And now I'm just going, and I just did this um, squirrel in this center, and I did it down here in this one. That's a repeat of it, just like it's on your handout. I didn't add any, oh, I did too. I handed, well, I never know what I do. I did add something different, but that's how you use the Marcus apparatus. And you can also do it on, you know, take a round tile. This outside border is the size of uh, the Zendala tile that you get from Zentangle. Um, I, I sell a smaller one in mine, uh, in my store that's a little bit smaller, but you can, this is it, it's a three and a half inch size because I wanted one that was the same size as my three and a half inch square. So it's the same size. Let's see if I've got a, uh, I do, I have a tent one so you can see that, that it's the, you know, it's that same size. I, I just wanted some this size. I like that size and they just fit in a little, um, I could carry them with me easier. So there we have how to use the Marcus Apparendus and oh, I said we were going to use bumper L. Where did I put that tile? There it is. Hmm. We'll come back to that. Hey, so can I, I say, may I say something just okay, a second? Please do. My husband accidentally printed my Marcus Operandus full size on a sheet of typing paper, and you've got lines already there. It doesn't fit the circles that we have. But it <laughs> you when it you print them when you download accessible. Yes, what? But when you download it, you can download it in different sizes. You can print it in different sizes. You need to tell your printer to print it the original size, 
that Maria did it and not print, because it, sometimes it will say, do you want me to print the size of the paper? But if you tell it to print the original size, it will print uh, a size that will work with the mandala tile or with well, he, a three he, and a half inch. That makes a difference. So, it, he did print it full size on the paper and it makes it too big in yes. one sense of the word. But when you put squares on it, it's no longer too big. <laughs> Isn't that handy? That um, that we, you know, you, you can make them, that's why we say, there's no mistake in Zentangle, only opportunity, right? Uh, because when, when we make a, a, say so much a mistake, it's, it's really just an opportunity to do something. So our next tangle that I'm going to do, I'm going to get out my um, my book and just show you this. This tangle is called um, ibex, and some people, you know, it's it's kind of a little unknown tangle. And this one right here that I did was from last week, and it was. Um, I'm gonna remember, it was, hmm, think I could remember, I, blue. Blue, thank you. <laughs> I love you when you do that, thank you. So this is, this was blue that I, and I just did it in, in, um, so the book is just kind of a way to uh, get you to do a tangle or, Sometimes I can't think of a tangle I want to do. I'll have my supplies with me and I can't think of anything. And I used a blue pen on here. So we're just going to do Ibex. And I'm just, I had the hardest time stopping. I don't know if you guys have her start tangling. And I wanted just to keep going because I, I thought it would be, you know, it was just so relaxing. So I'm going to do Ibex and I'm going to do one right up here in this corner. So that it is um, all by itself, so you can see how you do the original, the first one. Let me see if I can get my, um, and we just start with a spiral. And then it comes back and spirals in on itself. So first it spirals out. First we're spiraling out. Then we come up and then we spiral in. And it's just, this is one, this is a very, very relaxing tangle. Just extremely relaxing. And then we come off of the top, which is, that's what's a little bit different about this, is where do we do the next tangle? Is that we, we come off the top of it, and it spirals in. So we would come here and spiral. Actually, I don't think you, I think you could do it any way you wanted. I started just take coming off of it and just spiraling anywhere I wanted. I didn't even follow any instructions at all. I just, you know, I just spiraled off of the end of it. And um, they can be small. And then I, I love to, you know, fill in spaces with auras. So I just filled in this space. As you're hearing my my phone keeps ringing and I have to I thought I turned it off but it comes up on my iPad on my computer because um, it's what I uh, Apple equipment does it shares with each other so um, and then I filled this in colored this pot in right here because I I need the drama. And on the original, you see here, I've taken, this was, I did this one and I took my jelly roll pen 
and I put little dots in there with on top of it. Here's when I would just started and I, I said to myself, you really got to stop before so you can teach that and show that one. You're going to have your whole page done. Um, and you're not going to have anything to teach if you do that whole page. But I, I have to admit that I got the idea for this book from Carol O's Tangle a Day Calendar, that I loved her Tangle a Day Calendar. Her first couple of Tangle a Day Calendars were just so inspiring for me. And I bought some and sold them on my store. And the company that made them sent me these really cool little cards that I could give out as, as gifts. And I gave them out in my class. They were just some of Carol's tangles that were partially done and you got to finish them. And it was so, it was really very, very relaxing for me to not have to think, what tangle am I gonna do? Um, because even on the front of the book, let me see if I can turn. And the, it, it's, um, well, because it, it, you can just flip it in, there it is. Even on the very front of the book, I went ahead and, and started tangling more. I added um, just more stuff to it. That's not originally what comes on it. But um, it, was, it was just very relaxing. I thought, I'll bet other people would enjoy something like that. That is a way to, to you know, not have to think of a tangle. So Ibex was the tangle. Then I added flu because... It was still in my mind from last week. And then I wanted to do, and this tangle, I, I'm, I don't even think I can pronounce it. E-N-Y-S-H-O-U. And I'm gonna, um, so this is the tangle. And, I, and it's from Zentangle and I don't know, I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyone wanna chime in there for me? Any shoe. Any shoe. Okay. Oh, duh. <laughs> I always try to make them way hard. So thank you so much. Any shoe. And it, and I thought it kind of went with breathe because it kind of has this wavy line. So we're going to do any shoe. And I, I was drawing this and my husband said, oh, I like that one too. I could do that one. So I'm going to put it right down here. I, I don't have um, any rhyme or reason where I put things. So, um, but I am going to make what I call um, a smile. My husband called it a smiley face. Um, so I made a little, I, I call it, um, it's not even a smiley face. It's, um, I don't know, a little worm. <laughs> it's a crescent word. moon. What? Crescent, crescent moon. moon. Yes, it's a little crescent moon shape. And um, I always, and then we're going to start. And I like to, when I do in a shoe, I, I usually start about center. And then I'm going to work my way out to the outside tip. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do just a long, a wavy line. And then I'm going to just four of that about three quarters of the way down and then you come in on that line so you want it to kind of meet together so you come down and then start coming back in on the line so it kind of thickens up the ink but the line stays thin and i cannot believe i'm drawing away from me Normally, I do not do that. Normally, I draw towards me. And I, and I just really accent, I really go over that again. And I think I can get one more in there and I want it, it's fairly close together. All the way down. And now we're going to come in and we're going to do another one. And it's going to come in 
And I like it to holly bob underneath that one. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to aura and make sure you come in and draw so you, you start coming back in on it about three quarters of the way down. And I'm going to come back here to the center. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to fill it in. So I could keep um, but I but I'm going to stop right there because I can add one I can add another one that holly boss underneath and then we just do the same thing we're doing before did someone have a question I heard him unmute so and I'm just filling that in and letting them entwine on each other. And even though it looks like, okay, I couldn't get any more, I could start. And I could fill one in that kind of comes from the back of that inner shoe. So it looks like there was quite a few. And I could do another one. So we could just keep going. That's what I did right here. I even added some color. I, I thought, oh, I've got a blue pen. I can add some blue into there and give it some, some blue. Um, and this one would be fun to shade with a little blue just because you could do that. I pour it out of the way. There we go. And, uh, but there we have um, Ibex in his shoe. And I would probably come back in here on, on this one and fill in some Ibex. So it kind of, you know, goes underneath and kind of crowds because I I like when tangles are underneath each other and crowd themselves. But this is just that is just a fun little tangle to do, and um, and I like to with the just breathe. Anymore, that's what we really have to tell each other. This pandemic's going to be over. We just need to be. Oh, that was kind of a pun on. I hope no one has somebody that has contracted the virus. I, if they have, I hope they got better. I, we only had in our area so far six cases of the virus and all have gotten better. And um, so that's why they're relaxing some of the things that um, that um, restrictions and allow us to do things. We have two more tangles that we're going to that I'm going to do, and um, I am going to I am going to come back to where did well I had it. I, I, somebody said, have everything together when you tangle. I don't know. I use, it was right here a second ago, the one I was going to show. It's probably upside down. I probably turned it over. Okay. There's two that I'm going to do. And, um, and I'm just going to use this to do them on. Oh, I think, I think I found it. No, I did not find it. Well, that's okay. Cause I will just. I am just going to take my, my tile that I did that little string on 
those two little strings and we're going to do this tangle on this. Um, this one is patina and I, it is an original tangle. And when I first did it, I liked it. Then it morphed into floors and then it morphed into um, Nazepal. So I think that it's a great beginner tangle to teach someone if they are doing, if you have, you know, if you're a beginner or you're showing somebody else and they've never done Zen Tangle, this will spark your imagination. So we're going to put it in these spaces and just show how um, it can, you know, spark your imagination. So I've got my string here with its, those two round circles. And I'm just going to divide this with um, straight lines, just kind of, and in between the lines are, if you can see the tip of my pen, they're pretty far apart. They're a good half inch apart. I don't want them really close because as we do, this particular tangle can get small really fast. And if you do this close together, it is, it's extremely hard to do. So the best thing to do is give yourself space on your first ones, because then you're gonna come and you're going to draw going back the other direction and looking at keeping those spaces as square, as possible. So now I have kind of a checkerboard um, square done. And the, um, the next one is we're just going to go opposite. And, and Maria gave a, um, a really good suggestion when I think um, Rick was doing Nazepal. I don't know what he, ate. but when you draw your next one, and I'm going to come here in the center is don't try to draw all the way down to the bottom. Look to that point. And this is how I've always drawn it. Go from one square to the next so that you, you just go to that intersection. And if your line has a little curve in it, that's okay. Because when you, I put this behind this particular tangle, I, I grounded it behind this, and it helps when you do um, something, when you're doing a tangle holly ball behind, this helps if you think, go from each intersection, and then we rotate it one more time, and go. from to each of those those sections and this is this is the patina that's it and you can see how it can morph itself into other tangles so we're going to morph it into a couple of tangles right now because I was drawing it one day and, um, well, um, we're going to do Nazepal because I love Nazepal. I think it is a beautiful tangle. And, um, and I'm just debating whether I want to do it again. I'm gonna make this into Nazepal and then I will repeat this same tangle in these other sections, depending on whether, how much time we have. So Nazepal, if you're not familiar with the Zeppel, it's you it's like putting a a rock or a stone. I always call it river rock. What you're doing is you're rounding off the corners. But you don't want to just round off the corners. You actually want to draw on the line all the way down, all the way up, then round the corner. You want to actually do that. If you just round the corners, it doesn't have the same look. 
And mine is just going to go off the edge. so that we get this. And then we're just going to do that in every one of those triangular spaces. We're going to draw. And I live in an area where it was a, a river bed. And um, some people call them river rocks. We call them cobble rocks here. Um, so I guess if you, you know, if you had a cobblestone road. I would hate to ride, drive on one of those. That would be horrible. They used to pave the road that way. I don't think they ever did here, but yeah, we're not that old of a community that they... But it's got, we've just got that round Nazepo, and that I'm sure is, and I, I mean, I can't say 100% for sure that that's where Maria and Rick got in the but um, and you could you could round them you could even say I'm gonna stop and and use that edge and just round that or you could end it I decided do you see me go back I decided I wanted to uh, make that stone just small there or that in the in there so instead of having it look like it went under i i just did a little tiny area well i was doing the zeppo one day and um and i as i was doing it i thought oh i'm gonna shade the zeppo and um and I thought, well, I wonder if I could just shade it with my, you know, with a few strokes of your pen, like you would um, a, just some small lines. And I, to shade something you know, where you just use, I don't know, it's got a, it's got a name and I, it's just left me and I can't remember what. They call when they just shade with your pen with little tiny strokes. It'll come to me later. And I thought, I bet I could do this Zeppel and I could shade it. And I thought about it. I thought, well, that kind of looks like a flower here. And so I decided I'm just going to stroke out from this center. And I just went around the outside scent of, you know, each. I could see that there were eight little kind of petals or rocks. And when I started seeing that they, it started looking like a, a flower instead of, um, they started looking like flower petals instead of rocks. And then I thought I will color this in. And that's how I got my, the tingle I call um, nymph. And um, it's little, um, and it just morphed itself from the patina to Nazepal to nymph. And that's really what, what we, you know, I think that's where we see all the designs coming is you'll be drawing something and then you'll be inspired to think, oh, I think I'm gonna change that and do something a little bit different. And uh, that will change it. So I'm gonna so I I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do this. Oh, I was off the camera. I'm gonna do this whole um, this whole tile. I'm gonna do this one all in the, but I'm gonna grid off another section. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to grid off this little section right here. So, and I'm using about the same size of grid.
and I was just kind of guessing where. And now I'm going to do one where I have gone in and just. This is like a little floors pattern in a sense, except it has. So I'm just rounding off those corners. And coloring them in so it just round off. And then color in that center. And you could not round those off. You could just put a little dot on the corners and make a little circle. And you have, you even have another look. So that, um, you know, that's just a, it's just a fun, it's a fun little, very versatile little tangle. And I'm going to go back in and, and I'm going to, I mean, we could shade this one. I'm just going to shade. I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to go down those lines that the straight lines, all the straight lines, and then take my shading stamp. Oh, I just had it. I wonder if it. Well, it was just in my hand. I just used it. We all know I just used it. So we don't know what it went, where it went. Well, hold on just a second. There's another one. So, and then I'm just going to just blur these out. very you know just very easy to do and we could take this same thing again and repeat it over here and just do um the just do the the cobble rocks in there and um, and then just shade it well, there was one other so let's let's grid off i'm going to grid off this side to end this time, I am going to do it not not at all square, and I think Maria Rick called this crazy example. But instead, I just drew lines going each way. You could do that round corner thing, or I'm just going to go in. this time and just put anywhere where my line crosses, I'm just going to put a dot. And then I'm going to come back in to this area and aura that shape on the inside. Because my problem is I never know when to stop. I just, and I always think, well, that, that could be, it's probably got, that tangle probably has a name. But I never concern myself with tangle names because when I'm drawing, I just want my brain to kind of be set free and just tangle. I'm not taking very much time in taking that very. And that all started from one type of one tangle, one set of lines. And you can just go 
absolutely zonkers with a tangle. The last tangle, and I don't know if it really is going to go in this spot that I have left, but I'm going to put it in here and then I. No, I'm not because I really have an idea for this. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in this one because I know it will go in here. This was one where I did and I just had a space and I'm going to put it all along this little line right here that I have. And the reason I decided I wanted to teach this one is I was outside in my yard and I'm, um, the, the, you know, we had to, my husband was weed eating the grass and grass is growing. It's spring here in the USA. And, and um, this was, I think it's called bumper and you can do it with um, squared off ones or straight lines. So if you have the handout, you look at bumper, I did it with pointy lines, and I think Maria does it with a little square top. But if you're left-handed, I want you to go from um, right to left. If you're right-handed, go from left to right, okay? So we're gonna start out, and I'm gonna, if you don't have a line, just draw a pencil line on your, on your paper or your tile or whatever you're using because we're going to go along that line and we start with a little line and then i'm going to draw up and come back down on the right side and then over a little bit and then come up and holly buff underneath then come back down always on the right side over a little come up back down on the right side and we just continue along there, always remembering to go to the right if you're right-handed. And these little blades, these little things can be tall or short. They can curve. And you can do them so they have a squared off top, but I, I kind of wanted mine to look like um, grass because the dandelions are blooming and the bees are loving it. We're beekeepers, so we love dandelions. We let the dandelions grow in our yard and um, we don't have neighbors, so they don't care. <laughs> And I'm and now I'm I'm gonna go right underneath here. I'm gonna holly ball underneath. So I'm gonna pretend like I went underneath. So we just kind of pretend like I usually when I go under, I usually kind of draw my pen like, okay, that would have gone underneath. Oh, and that one I didn't go back. I did two, so I'm going under two. I didn't cross under, I went the same way. So I just let it kind of morph itself into. Because I'm gonna come back in with this and I'm gonna color some of these in with with um, a little, uh, probably my Prismacolor pencils and shade them. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do on the underneath side of the grass. See, now I have my grass growing here. I'm gonna turn this around and I am going to draw this tangle, the one we just squill under here. So I'm just going to start here and I'm gonna come down, draw my two little lines. Anywhere where I see that grass or that bumper tangle, I'm going to holly buff.
and I'm taking it all the way out to the edge instead of um, instead of stopping it like I did the first time and Tata, I go all the way out to the edge and now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put my shape my little rounded edges they're also going to holly bar this one is a little tricky i have to think okay where does that go and i'm going to just kind of come down under this because it's kind of hidden sometimes i think it's better to go from the bottom this way if you don't know where it's going and then i'm going to aura it and it's just going to order right off the right off the tile and i'm um, rotating as i go and here we have it so here we just kind of have to think where did that go might have to kind of look in there to see where that goes and um with well there we have it because i i've done it over here too um i can um i could aura the do the little um echoes on here where they go in this space so this one i just drew I'm just going to fill in this space with auras. Kind of, I think they kind of do that um, little like a log cabin. And this is where it gets a little tricky is going behind so i may not go all the way behind i may stop and leave it at that and now i can shade this i i should i'm going to finish this one and then we'll shade just to see what this looks like and when i fill in i have to be extremely careful that i do not push the tip of my pen in. I'll have to confess and I'll show you my pen that I did this on. Okay, let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, okay. So this is a Micron 01 pen and I pushed so hard on it that I pushed the, um, the tip right down in that, that little tiny fiber tip. I pushed it all the way down into the pen and and it was brand new and I was just sick. And I had an old PN pen that was losing its ink. It was almost, so I took the tip off of it and I put the PN plastic nib tip on the end of my O1 and I saved the ink that was in there. So that's your tip for today. If you can rescue, I just got a pair of, um, I used a pair of fingernail clippers so I could grab a hold of it and pull it out. And then I put it back, the new tip, the plastic nib tip back in there and pushed it back in. And I tried pulling it out with um, fingernail clippers, but I had already pushed it too far back in. I couldn't get it. So I saved the ink in there by putting on that plastic nib. So I very seldom throw away a pen because I will cannibalize it and use like the other parts of it so that I can if I still have ink in there because I love this ink and it just but so you can actually see that it says O1 one and it has a plastic nib pen. the plastic nib pens you know they have that PN they say PN on and they have a plastic nib on the end of them so you can do that if you need to cannibalize, if you, if you have a brand new pen and you push too hard and you couldn't, um, you couldn't rescue it. So I'm gonna just shade this a little. Um, 
just to give it some dimension, I'm going to shade here. And I was going to get out um, a colored pencil and shade with a colored pencil and blend with my odorless paint thinner, but I didn't. So I can't say anything more. I put quite a bit down, quite a bit of graphite, because I wanted that to be not just a little tiny bit. Of, I want it to be gray, because there's still a lot of white in there because we've aurad it. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to put my graphite, and this can be a little tricky when you're shading around something else that you don't want to, so you, you kind of have to be a little tricky, but you, you, can, you can shade around it. And a lot of times I will have enough um, graphite on that shading stump that it will It will just still blend out. So I still have one more space. I don't know. Sometimes I don't do anything in that space. I like a little white space on my tiles, especially if I didn't give myself a border. So let yourself leave white space. You don't have to tangle up every space that's in there. But I may even come back and just do some more bumper along that edge and just leave it. So there are the, the tangles for today. We did, we had quite a few that we did that you might even have tiles that you need to finish later. And we're coming up on two o'clock and I am going to end the recording. And then if we have anything you wanna say, we can say it. So I am ending the recording.